Okay, everybody, we'll uh, call this meeting of the Community Development Committee to order. It's our last meeting of the year, and we've had a real productive year. I thank you all for, for showing up and taking time out of your schedules, especially as the holidays are approaching. Uh, and and for, thanks for uh, helping us have a good turnout today, too. Let's start with the introductions. If we could begin over with Miranda over on the left side and just run around the table. Miranda Wolf, Planning Department. Nicole Crutchfield, Planning Department. Thomas Hill from United Way. Sam McDonald. Matthew Pike, Fargo Housing. Linda Cleavy. Uh, Shara Fisher, Planning Commission. Jim Johnson. Kenny Nixon. Sammy Eden, Shank Home Builders Association. Christy Silskar, Planning and Development. Jasmine Markison, Planning and Development. Okay. And Jim, you may want to pull your mic closer to you. Um, so. All righty. Is there any, uh, does anybody have any changes or recommendations for uh, the agenda or will approve it as it is? That's okay. I'll move to approve it. Move to approve by Jim Johnson. Is there a second? Second, second Kenny Nixon. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, nay? We'll work on the agenda as it is. Uh, how about the minutes, the last meeting? Any changes or corrections? If not, I'll entertain a motion to approve. So I'll move. Jim Johnson moves. Here's second. I'll second. Second, Shara. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Minutes will be posted as they are uh, presented. Okay, we'll continue on. And Nicole, it always goes to you and your staff. Uh, thank you for helping sure. us with the agendas the way you, you, you do. Um, and so you all know that's the, the topics and the items are vetted through the staff. And they spend an immense amount of time preparing this. So thank you for that. Uh, any, is there anybody in the audience that would like to present us with public comment today? So we would welcome you to the podium if you have any public comment. All right. Seeing none, we'll go on to community development block grant updates. Uh, Nicole? Sure. And um, just want to let you know, uh, Tia would be here if she can, but uh, she's out today. Uh, and so uh, we'll do the best we can without her. But um, wanted to report on two um, uh, CDBG update items. And um, as we go into the uh, 2019 year, you'll see these as recurring subject matters um, as we um, give you monthly updates. And um, the first one is uh, the approve, uh, approval of amendments. And in your packet, um, maybe just a little background on any time, you'll, you'll see these more often as we adjust, especially as we get into our fifth year of our consolidated plan and um, conclude that five-year segment where we're gonna be making some changes as we proceed through 2019. And um, just as a reminder, there's, um, HUD has a five-year plan. They call that the consolidated plan and a one-year plan, and they call that the action plan. And every time we have activities, they have to align to the five-year plan and the one-year plan. And, um, and so this is a little status report on how we're doing with that five-year consolidated plan and um, recognizing that anytime there's a change um, greater than 50,000, um, we have to report that to HUD and through an action plan amendment. And then anytime we add an activity, we have to report that or delete an activity, uh, we have to report that as well as um, um, anytime there's a change that affects both the action plan and the consolidated plan, we go through that process. And to make that actual change, um, so you haven't seen a whole lot of these in the past, but as um, projects get more complicated and uh, there's a host of reasons why changes need to happen, and we can go into that here as we proceed forward. But um, the, the city has a, um, it's a required action from HUD, but we have a citizen participation plan. And that citizen participation plan tells us how we do the changes and how we have to report on those to the public and how we include you, the city committee, the planning commission, and the city commission as part of that process. So uh, we've just, uh, about two weeks ago, entered in a 30-day uh, notification process to the public and um, we had the public hearing last night at City Commission. Um, we still have two weeks left open to that public process. And so by all means, just because we went to City Commission last night, that was just more of a notification period. Um, we don't want to negate your role here. And so we're just trying to align the calendar to try to get these filed um, by early January if we can. And so, um, 
So what is in front of you today is um, one is an update that we're, we're having to cancel three projects um, from last year and that would be um, that was originally assigned as part of um, the CDBG activities and that was um, the Great Plains Food Bank, the Jeremiah Program, and Youth Works. And um, for those that have been sitting on the commission for uh, CD committee here for a while, you'll remember those as part of um, the CDBG grant awards from past years. And the reason those have canceled is um, either the um, agent, like Great Plains Food Bank, decided they didn't, it wasn't the timing to do that project. Um, the Jeremiah program, they had some uh, <coughs> construction contracting timing issues related to being registered in the federal system. And YouthWorks, um, uh, simply they're, uh, from my construction, this is my assess personal assessment, um, the scope of work and the, um, uh, the scope of work and the order of magnitude that would make a contractor interested in participating in Davis Bacon, et cetera, just didn't match up. And so, um, so that was a hard time um, getting those projects up and running. I know uh, special thanks to Christy and Jasmine who spent the last three years trying to get those projects up and running and um, just couldn't quite um, get it going. And so I was tired of canceling or carrying those projects and timelines and we just need to get the money spent. Um, and so, uh, uh, so that's kind of item one. Item two is um, we would like to add a project, and that includes um, the Gladys Ray Emergency Homeless Shelter Facilities Improvements. Are, they're talking about also relocation, and so we want to work with them on that. And then the Washington Elementary School Playground Improvements. Um, I'll start with the Washington Elementary School um, in their social service grant funds. Um, they actually contacted the city of Fargo thinking to apply for that and as part of that application process what happens is as you can imagine the notice goes far and wide we get calls far and wide and as part of that vetting process the city works with those applicants to think about the CDBG make more sense or the social service funds make more sense for the Washington Elementary School playground that seemed to make more sense for um, CDB um, for the CDBG program and on top of that, they, um, what we're learning in construction project, first of all, construction is a requirement for CDBG money. And to do that CDBG money, we have to be able to basically spend it in three months. And so to have a construction project for those in the construction industry to recognize to spend money in three months, you have to have your contractor ready to go, your scope identified, your funding identified. Uh, you have to have all of that identified before the money is actually flowing. And so um, it sounds like Washington Elementary School meets all of those criteria and they also have matching funds from some other fundraising they, they're doing. This um, meets a low to moderate income neighborhood which is really hard for us to meet that area requirement and so we think um, Tia through her vetting has identified this as something that's easy for us to um, to match up with the CDBG program um, that has the capacity both on the receiver end on the staff end. They say they've used CDBG monies before on this playground and so we'd like to proceed with that forward. It seems like it's money we could dispense within the next 60 days, which will be leading to item number two on our timeliness test. Um, the Gladys Ray program, that's come to us as, um, obviously we have a long standing relationship with uh, Jan Eliason and public health and the Gladys Ray, and um, they're just you know, bursting at the seams. They're looking at expanding, they're looking at making some facility, much needed emergency facility improvements and um, also in their um, 2019 budget, they have money aside. The city approved them to also do some due diligence work on looking for maybe other locations or expansions. And so we see this as eligible for um, the city to take a lead on as part of the project, use this for public infrastructure. And again, because we'd be the lead in the construction management, we would have the capacity to, to get that money spent. Um, so I'm going to jump to timeliness real quick and then open it up for questions and, and further. Uh, oh, maybe the last one real quick was the slum and blight. Um, the slum and blight, which also leads to item um, 5D on the agenda. And um, what we'd like to do on the slum and blight is be able to assist in uh, when the properties of um, dangerous buildings are identified, um, assist in um, getting those um, demoed um, quicker. And we can do that through CDBG money if they're in neighborhoods with low to moderate income uh, eligibility. And so 
we see a matching option with um, the work <coughs> inspections office is doing right now as well as um, being able to dig a little deeper on our housing rehab projects that might need um, we're finding our housing rehab program um, the uh, those projects are getting bigger in terms of as those housing projects need improvements um, some of them might need to be special projects where we need to look at fifty to hundred thousand dollars worth of improvements on these properties to keep people in their homes and so this category would allow us to do that by increasing that fund and so um, and letting us do it on a spot by spot basis as opposed to um, right now we're limited into a geographic area um, so that's that summary and real quick I'll um, jump to 5b and um, let you know um, we will need action on this but I'm gonna, if you don't mind I'll jump to 5b and, and 5b basically what that is is the timeliness so we've been put on notice that we are um, eligible to not meet our timeliness test and um, I might turn to Christy to further explain what that means but um, in summary we have a set amount of money that we need to spend every year and if we don't um, this uh, the federal government puts us on notice um, and we've gotten these warnings before and usually we know oh yeah we just need to cash that five thousand dollar check and we're good and um, right now we're seeing we we're having difficulties we think we're gonna have difficulties meeting timeliness tests because um, we've got a couple factors coming in one is uh, we've been holding a large balance hoping the high-rise project or other projects might big housing projects might be coming through so over the course of the last three to four years we've been ho holding large balances and then every time these projects cancel out and we don't spend them, um, like YouthWorks and Jeremiah and Great Plains, um, we see that not meeting. Uh, and so that income comes back to us, as well as if we sell properties like Nokomis that we just recently sold, um, and it had old CDBG money in it from the 70s and 80s, that income has come back. So, and we have to spend that income first before we can spend the new assigned money. And so as a result, we have the good benefit of having over $500,000 of money that we need to spend by February 2nd. And so, um, so the likelihood of that not happening is probably high, um, but it's not anything to be nervous about. Um, what it does mean is that we have to be highly focused and um, be pertinent to um, some real projects that come into fruition. I'm confident with our team, with Tia, Christy Jasmine, and Mark, and the others that will be um, confident and um, if we stay focused over the next year meeting those requirements um, what could happen and we've already started talking to our housing rep about this is um, if we meet that timeliness test if we fail that timeliness twice that basically means we don't get any more money until we spend the money and then we have to do a, basically a workout plan and the workout plan is basically a time period where uh, we do a very incremental relationship building conversation with HUD on how we're going to do that and that's when you know the mayor gets on the phone with HUD etc as well and um, it's nothing to be scared of Moorhead's done it Grand Forks has done it other <coughs> cities have done it and so um, it's just probably a matter of time that we're getting used to that we might have to get there so I don't want to sound defeatist but it's probably just a matter of time and really this is a nationwide issue with HUD in terms of you know we've got a 40 year old plus program um, when Monica Graber retired, she was the, the uh, kind of meat and potatoes of HUD. And I don't want to call Monica Graber meat and potatoes, but if she's watching this, she would laugh. Um, but um, basically, um, with going to online monitoring, changes of rules, and um, these just kind of extenuating circumstances and succession planning is basically why we're in the situation we are today. So we're in the process of connecting with Grand Forks to learn how they cleaned up their program. Luckily, we have Tia because she cleaned up their program, and um, and Michael was part of that on the other side of the river, and so um, we project that's what 2019 is going to be all about as we move forward. So, we I know that's just a lot to throw at you all at once, and so the most important thing is we need the action plan and, um, amendment um, approved today. Um, City Commission will take final action on it in January um, at their January 2nd meeting. If you're not comfortable though with any of this, by all means. There's no pressure to act on it today. Okay. Open it up to the members. Any comments, questions for Nicole? If I could, so when a, so having you said up to you know possibly like a half million dollars, like sitting from 
whether it's revenue or things that have come back that haven't come to fruition, you basically have to have like shovel ready projects that can't be concepts. And so, I mean, that definitely does limit mm -hmm. a little bit of the scope, right? Yeah. Okay. Yep. Well, sorry, I, maybe I missed what exactly is the action plan that we're uh, approving? Approving. Yeah. yeah so um, if you go into your packet, it's actually, um, you'll have a cover memo here. And then uh, on the second page, um, uh, 3N, you'll see a little chart um, that kind of highlights um, a quick summary. And so maybe just for the record, I'll read it real quick. Um, basically, uh, let's see. Let me follow through here. Maybe that, sorry, maybe that's just part of it. Um, So, that, sorry, let me just walk through them one by one. Um, first of all, we're looking at a revised activity of slum, slum and blight and uh, abatement and hazard, hazardous property clearance. We want to add $520,000 to that line item. Um, and, then, um, and then that chart actually goes with the rest of that um, um, program, why we had that budget. Um, and then number two, you're kind of confirming that the Great Plains Food Bank um, uh, basically um, is retired um, and then the other canceled activities number three and four of um, Jeremiah and youth works and then you're at we're asking you to approve um, working on the Gladys Ray um, which means we would add hundred fifty thousand dollars to that plus um, the Washington Elementary School and we would contribute hundred fifty thousand dollars towards that so if there's a part of this if you want to pull out something separate like say um, Glass Ray or, or the Washington, we can certainly take that apart separately. Um, or if you feel part, good of part of it and not the other, it's certainly <coughs> open to discussion. Okay, the new activity only totals so 300,000, and so you're still going to need the 100,000. Is I thought we had that, didn't we allocate the 100,000 for the budget for Slim and Blight? Wasn't that storefront? Yeah, so this is adding to storefront. Okay, so we've basically spent the 100000 almost. I think we get a little bit left. So then we're still going to have another 200000 of unallocated for your new plan. Uh, I don't know, Christy, if you're following. Um, so Christy and Jasmine are our accounting folks. Sure. <laughs> so. Well, your total is six twenty, dollars and the 100000 was what we were using for Slum and Brett Blight. So that's your 520. And the 150 for <coughs> Gladys Ray and 150 for Washington is 300. So you still have about two, 220,000 unallocated. Which I think are already in programs today. So there's a whole bunch of program activities that we already have committed that are humming along just fine. So, so we were, we're working actually in total with about a $1.2 million um, mm -hmm budget kind of between our 2017 and 2018 budgets we're working right. with yeah so those aren't listed in here it's just really what's amended exactly yeah. right yeah that's a great question though and so for future amendments we'll definitely give you that well because picture. we don't want to lose the money we don't right. want to get in the situation of having to go through all that work you're mentioning we want yeah. to get very proactive with it yeah so but 200,000 would trigger it I'm sure Oh, yeah. Yeah, you can't hold more than 10%. Okay. Anybody else? Nicole, if I might, just for the sake of understanding it, um, and Jim might have insights, too, from the school district, is this typical to fund playground equipment through community development grants? Uh, in our history here, uh, I guess I would um, turn to Christy, too. Um, I know Jeremiah was going to be a playground. And um, I know we're certain to have neighborhood activities, whether it's been a school property playground. I don't have a lot of strong history with that. Um, I don't know if Christy has. I know we've helped in the past um, mm -hmm. at Agassiz. Okay. Just um, probably 2015, mm -hmm. we helped with that playground. Um, just noting that it benefited the whole area. Mm -hmm. Not so a couple of qualifications that make that playground um, um, eligible. 
is in the locate is the location itself if it's in a low to moderate income neighborhood so say a playground at Davies is probably not going to meet that qualification and then um, second uh, I know uh, Tia when she was kind of interviewing and vetting the person or the person that had reached out to her um, and I'm not quite sure if that person that reached out to her is part of a neighborhood organization or as part of the school um, but um, the um, you know basically that playground is open it's not locked basically it serves as a neighborhood park per se for everybody that lives in that neighborhood so if it had been you know locked or closed and not free access then that would not make it eligible either my, my sense is the PTAs are very involved aren't they Jim or not <coughs> they used to be um, not so much anymore okay and I could be wrong, but I think years ago uh, there was some uh, monies that were allocated to the Jefferson Playground, I believe. Yeah. Uh, typically, playgrounds it, historically were funded kind of in a three-part process or three matching components. The PTA would raise one-third, the school district would kick in one-third, and actually the park department used to participate with one-third. And just for the record, all of the playgrounds at all of the school buildings are open to the right. public and not locked. Mm -hmm. uh, some have fences around them just to keep the kids from running out into the street, but there are no lock gates on them. Um, the park district hasn't really in recent years been too involved, not to say that they wouldn't again. Um, and so the school district has really been stepping up more so um, mostly because the PTA funding component is, is a little problematic. Um, depends upon the size of the school and the neighborhood uh, what the fundraising capacity of the PTA is. Uh, we've got Madison Elementary with a little over 120 kids in a fairly low income neighborhood uh, versus uh, Kennedy Elementary with about 600 kids in a fairly affluent neighborhood much different funding reality for PTA fundraisers. Um, so we are trying to move away from that as much as possible. Okay. So that's good. Yeah, that's good. Okay. I was just curious. Mm -hmm. I, it, it, it caught my eye that we're, we're helping fund another government subdivision. So if this is a community effort and community use, and, and but my guess is we'll probably see more of those requests mm -hmm. coming. It is, so we should probably be prepared for that, mm -hmm. which isn't bad. Okay, any other questions, comments on the action plan? Do we need a motion here? I, I'm maybe going to help out. Mr. Chair, I'd make a motion to approve the amendments to the Community Development Block Grant, five-year consolidated plan, and annual action plans as presented in the December 13, 2018 memorandum with the accompanying document. A motion by Matt. Is there a second? I'll second. I'll second, that. second, Linda. Okay. Discussion. Anybody else? If not, Brenda, could we have a, one more call for discussion? Now we'll have a roll call vote, please. Cleavy? Yes. McDonald? Yes. Johnson? Yes. Eidenshink? Yes. Hill? Yes. Fisher? Aye. Pike? Yes. Redlinger? Yes. Enoxon? Aye. Strand? Yes. Okay, thank you. And, and on that note, um, Michael Redlinger, thank you for joining us. He's the assistant city administrator, so we appreciate your showing up. Did that motion cover both of those elements, or did you? It did, so we're, we don't need a second one? Correct. Okay. Um, Nicole, is it you again for the schedule for 2019, or who would be doing that? Yeah, sure. Um, so um, in your packet, I believe, are, um, is the upcoming meeting schedule for 2019. And um, I thought I'd just open it up for the floor, too, of um, confirming, um, you know, this day, you know, this, this day of the week and the month works for the commission and, um, uh, and the time works for, you know, everybody. And uh, so I just wanted to open that up as part of it. Otherwise, if, assuming if those do work for everybody, um, then um, these are how the dates would fall. So it's more um, a note of, um, you don't have to take action on it, but just kind of a more of a note for your calendars. Jim, do you still have issues maybe with some of those dates? Uh, you know, I couldn't tell you where I'm going to be on January 2nd, 
on <laughs> August 20th. Um, I don't really have issues. My preference would have been to get this on the second or fourth Tuesday, just because that's a school board meeting night, and I rarely travel on those nights. But if this has been a good day for everybody else, and typically we get a quorum, I'll just put it on my calendar and hope. Okay. Anybody else have issues or concerns with the calendar as proposed? And what we can try to do going forward is uh, accommodate people with call-ins. Mm -hmm. So if, if somebody is traveling or out on the road, um, we can easily uh, uh, set it up so that people can call in and still participate. Okay, so this is received. Mm -hmm. Homeless overflow. We've got good news, I believe, that you have to report, Nicole, you and your team. Yeah, um, thanks to Commissioner Strand um, kind of convening a meeting uh, uh, jointly with um, Public Health and um, Gladys Ray and um, uh, City Administrators uh, last month and then uh, we did a brief presentation at City Commission about two weeks ago and um, that included that um, in lieu of the church sheltering program that you know of from years past um, the uh, shelters have basically um, um, are between the increased capacity um, based on some you know, kind of interior remodels and changes, as well as the coordinated entry program um, that is now kind of fully running. Um, the the sheltering program feel feels like they can handle everybody on site. Um, that uh, that appears um, that that comes forward. Um, what that does, what they are qu uh, quick to um, comment on, though, is that um, this is good for me is to understand when they go into overflow status and overflow status, um, basically meaning they're at full capacity plus, and they basically work with our um, code <coughs> officials to make sure they're still under all codes, but basically it means extra hours from staff, all their resources are at full capacity. And um, I don't wanna put uh, words in the, um, in the shelter director's um, mouths, but basically the way I understand it is um, each of the shelters basically expect to go in a deficit um, based on how they operate um, with winter months. So they want to be very clear to, under, to, to mention that by all means is the homeless solution resolved. It's more about um, the capacity is stable and, um, um, you know, barring on any un, you know, unique cir circumstances for going into 20 uh, this winter. Uh, obviously, we're here in this winter, but I think, you know, not to put words in Commissioner um, Strand, but basically we wanted to make sure um, this time last year, you know, we were basically in this emergency status that um, the state of Minnesota had declared an emergency that which triggered an emergency response team uh, response. And as a result, you know, Fargo got pulled into that and uh, really became a um, community wide effort. I think in um, the discussions and investigations over the last month is really apparent to me how, um, whether it's both sides of the river, um, the Moorhead sheltering shelters and the, the Fargo shelters um, really work as a coordinated unit. And so it's, uh, it's really important to understand that if one kind of falls down, they all fall down. So whether it's Gladys Ray, Youth Works, Dor 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 Dorothy Day, um, et cetera, they all kind of work together. And so what happens is if, you'll see this a little bit later in the social service funds, what happens if someone presents at, a, um, at Gladys Ray, for instance, and they might be better served um, with women and children facility, um, they might be sheltered, you know, kind of given a taxi ride or a shuttle ride over to the other facility. And so they really work with the, uh, with the CARES program, thanks to the FM Homeless Coalition and um, that system. So. Um, so that's our uh, brief report, and um, Jan Eliason and Pastor Sue Klosterman were at City Commission a few weeks ago kind of presenting this report. And Nicole, um, I know some of this will come up in our next discussion on grants, but there was a, con a question raised with our staff discussion about inter interim funding for transportation. Mm -hmm. Did that get resolved, or Michael, do you know? And I see some recommendations in our next phase, but. For this year, I'm just curious how that got addressed. Right. Um, it, I'm, I'm just trying to remember. I recall the discussion, but yeah. I'm not recalling. Yeah. The so I think, and in, in, for this year, I believe it's uh, resolved for this winter um, between um, uh, the best way I understand it is 
there's a regional transit system or transportation system taxi system I should just say that runs out of FM homeless coalition and they see basically they give vouchers to each of the shelters um, but what happens is, is that that's um, terribly labor-intensive and the individual shelters don't have control individual control so that the administration of that becomes really problematic and so what Cody has done with the FM homeless Co coalition is connected with each of those shelters and each of those shelters are pretty much independent for the transit system except for Gladys Ray so Gladys Ray being a city function um, we're looking at city um, right. city um, revenue to help pay for that and so I think we're covered for 2018 and now we're um, you'll see in these recommendations for 2019 okay and but for 2019 when will that kick in um, probably as soon as you know January February. it would okay yeah. good that's good to know yeah. and, um, it, and it, I would just add that's right because the Gladys Ray piece was taken care of because that was city mm -hmm. and just beyond the county year budget mm -hmm. or approved yep. budget we started the new budget year in mm -hmm. just a matter of weeks uh, well really a matter of days and and then we're just yeah. we, we blink that on yeah. and that's just available okay. and that that's just gonna be handled I think that the other thing too is that next year if we find that there's some real gap there we need to revisit that mm -hmm. and then either look at the other elements of the budget to try fund it and I think we're just going to trial it this year and um, thank you for reminding me about mm -hmm. lettuce rank because I think we'll, we'll see how it goes but yep. I think we feel like we've got it so. one of the primary charges of the community development committee is addressing homelessness and and um, you know, so so you all know that's that's just a primary goal of ours and uh, our, our, we had public health, we had the emergency response folks, we, 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 we had a room full of folks uh, around the table talking about their anticipated preparation for, for this winter coming on. And, and you'd be really proud. Mm -hmm. I know, Jim, you have worked with the homeless shelters and the group crews of the past, and many of you others do too. But we, we have a lot to be proud of in our community with the folks who, who step up and provide those services, and they're somewhat invisible. To the general public, so uh, it's a it's a really really pressing priority, and and uh, and, and I just want to thank all of all of you for what you've done, and Nicole and your team, and everybody for, for their work across the city uh, to to keep that that um, from being a bigger challenge to us all. Anything else on homelessness? I just had a question. And I'm not sure who to even direct this to, or if it's something that would be at your fingertips. But I'm just curious what kind of a percentage between. Um, public and private dollars uh, are utilized uh, when it comes to uh, dealing with homelessness you know you, you said that at some point or that we've more or less been informed that they would be operating at a deficit mm -hmm. you know how, how I mean does that trigger anything as far as public um, infusion to, to help balance that because it is a public problem mm -hmm. so I'm just curious I'm, I don't know if that's something you can answer or anybody in this room can at this point. I could speak to it from, I guess, our perspective. Um, so then the, the only publicly funded shelter, that would be Gladys Ray. So right. the other ones are private nonprofit entities. Mm -hmm. And so they do receive some funding from housing and urban development or through like emergency solution grants through the state of North mm -hmm. Dakota. But um, that's for a very limited scope of work and so not usually covered by overflow so that would just be on them to basically say yes or no they don't want to do it um, but there is no automatic triggering of public release of funds if something like this were to happen so. okay. okay anybody else on homelessness all righty code enforcement are we carrying that forward to january i understand uh yeah i uh i think we've Failed to let Bruce know, and Bruce is in the audience. But um, <laughs> um, so uh, <laughs> three weeks in a row, three weeks in a row. <laughs> but I know he's also um, staying closely, closely connected with the community development committee work. If you would like, um, I said, given the time, I would propose we continue that and move to the social service discussion, and then if there's time, I agree. Uh, I we may have, that's so we'll we'll go on to the next topic, mm -hmm. and we we had a, a committee of three that met. Sam and Linda and Jim and I, I hear you've spent an immense amount of uh, time working through these um, these a applications and grant for, you know if information. Linda, you were chair. I was chair. Who do you, do you want to begin with an overview of a principal, you know just a, a balcony view of some of the a actions and directions and 
wherever you'd like to help us understand where your committee went. Sure. Well, this was, I think, much more of a deep dive than we'd normally done. Um, thanks to staff, they'd given us a lot of background, and then we had a really good discussion about um, funding the programs that were smaller and more directly involved with the clients that are served. And so then um, we went through, I think we were there from nine to three. <laughs> and, um, but we went through each one very detailed. And so everyone got a good look. We had very reasoned discussion about which direction to take it. And you know, with trying to uplift um, the whole idea of how much more can we do, we really focused on those smaller yet capable. And, uh, and then we have some ideas for the really small ones, but we haven't fleshed them out yet to maybe make them even grow to more capacity. Did you um, evolve some changes that we should kind of? Uh, um, yeah, of? we sort of focused on, uh, well, we had a scoring system. And what became apparent with the scoring system was that the ones that were scoring really high were um, basically very large organizations that had stay, uh, you know, capacity on their own. Our budget's very small. We don't have a lot to distribute. And our contribution to that large budget was very small in many cases. So we felt that reallocating those funds to better serve where we had a more percentage of an impact, a larger impact on these programs is where we focused our, our recommendations. Okay. Sam? Yes. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Sam had great insights. We appreciated it. And Jim? <laughs> uh, well, I was the newbie, and as such, I had lots of questions. I still have lots of questions. At some point in time, not today, I, I think we really should go through the guidelines that were given to us because there were a couple of them that I struggled with quite a bit. Uh, one is it should be non-denominational entities. Well, we had several denomination entities asking for funds for very good purposes, but if we give money to a church, and we have a rule that says we shouldn't be looking at churches, I'm thinking either the guidelines should change mm -hmm. or we should adhere to it. Um, there was another one that really, really is a conundrum in my opinion, and that's whether or not the resources are going to assist Fargo citizens. Um, and I'll just use the Great Plains Food Bank. That's a statewide organization. Um, we at best would be 10% probably of the population they serve. So should they get nothing from us? Should we only give them 10% of what they ask for because that's how much of it will trickle back into Fargo? And again, you start looking at these organizations, we're a community. I, I get the fact that this is Fargo's dollars to spend, but we're a community. So. Churches United for the Homeless, they're located in Moorhead. Uh, half their residents don't have a ID that would identify them as a Fargo resident. So that I struggled with quite a bit. Um, if we're targeting this for Fargo citizens, then that's one thing. If we're targeting it for the Metro, that's another set of winners. And if we're fine with statewide or region-wide organizations, that's another set of winners. So I think at some point in time, certainly not today, we may want to look at those guidelines, maybe make some recommendations back to the city commission, if that's where they should go for change. Um, and then whatever our guidelines are, we should probably apply to them and stick to them. It's really good feedback, Jim. Uh, and Nicole, you had, I think, had mentioned that we might continue this committee's work. Yeah, one of the things I uh, kind of threw at them, because it was such great um, dynamic conversation with uh, really fabulous ideas and the knowledge in the community that the um, that the members shared that uh, and they all seem to have the passion for it so I kind of put them on the spot and I'll put them on the spot again but you know if they want to continue this conversation over the next course of the next six months and have some recommendations to bring back to um, the committee as a whole and to the mayor um, and so and ideally too we would maybe want to get those changes discussed talked about shared with the community the broader community and then uh, uh, so that um, 
uh, the organizations in our community that are looking at these funds have some time to prepare. So looking at a three to four or five month kind of process of um, continuing this dialogue so that by this time next year, uh, it's a, I'll just say a little, you know, cleaner system. I think there's real value to that, Nicole. And if we can kind of, uh, Linda, you as chair, mm -hmm. maybe you can all kind of look for the window of opportunity that would work for you to, mm -hmm. to, to go back at these discussions. Mm -hmm. Now help me understand, are these in our bylines, bylaws, or where do these guidelines come <laughs> from? Uh, they come from nowhere. And <laughs> so, so we can uh, make them what we want. Well, and so um, what's interesting enough, and it'd be worth a you know, conversation with the, uh, the architects from the past, um, but um, you know, Mayor Furness and uh, uh, Jessica Thomason and you know, Dan Molly and Pat, of course. Um, but I did have a um, meeting with Jessica just to um, kind of learn a little bit more about this and understand, because again, I was having trouble finding you know, kind of guiding principles, et cetera. And we, we mimic, um, we mimic the guiding principles after the CDBG HUD program. And so, uh, as well as the greater con consolidated plan, the five-year plan I was talking about. So it's not like they're just pulled out of nowhere. They're pulled out of the aligned with the CDBG program. And, um, we, uh, and so when um, talking to the um, kind of past architects of this um, program, it was basically about how do we kind of bring that feeder group into the CDBG program. So some of these folks aren't ready for CDBG funding, but they could be with some mentoring and some shepherding and some and some guidance as well as um, and so we started kind of talking about it as a committee uh, you know almost like they graduate into this like federal system you know and the, well at the same time the federal system isn't the right place for everybody and so kind of trying to understand that balance and how these can almost be matching funds towards a, a greater goal and that's that was the origination and I think that's what taught me um, when talking to Jessica, why these were aligned together in the first place, you know, so that totally makes sense why these were aligned together in the first place. And this is the first year we separated them uh, um, from the social service and the CDBG. So all this process also will be coming again in the very near future as we open the doors for the CDBG application process. So um, we might want to I'll keep that in mind. We might want the same members. We might want different members as we go into the CDBG application receipt and and review process over the next four months as well. This is really only the second year, to my knowledge, that we've done it through committee yes. uh, at this level. So we're evolving this, this approach um, and, and, and the principles um, that we, we adhere to. Okay, how do, we, how do we want to go at this package that you, your committee Well, um, first of all, I apologize. It was out so late, too. And so I know you haven't had a chance to really dive in or even walk through it. So I'm open to suggestions. Um, one is, um, so maybe I'll start out with a greater goal. The greater goal is that we adopt some sort of recommendations, whether the, they are these or they're amended. And then um, that um, is a recommendation to the mayor and city commission, and that would be presented to them uh, in the coming weeks. And so whether we aim for the January 2nd meeting or the January 14th or whatever that next meeting is, um, that's question number one. And if you want some time to look through this, or if you want to dialogue through this now, at the same time, um, hopefully the chart's e easy enough to read. Basically, the ones with the green highlights are the ones with recommendations for funding. And we can talk through those one by one, um, or we could uh, you know, have a special call meeting. You know, I I'm really open to how we want to proceed from here. And unfortunately, so, I didn't have a chance to rehearse this with any of the committee members. So, so green are recommended expenditures. Yes. Yellow is? So yellow, maybe a quick introduction to that. Um, so yellow is staff's recommendation. And so, um, and I'm separating those. So the Fargo Human Relations Commission and the Fargo Youth Initiative, and it used to be the Native American Commission too, but that became its own line item in 2019's budget. Um, our city-sponsored activities, city-sponsored um, commissions, and in years past, they were 50-50 funded, 50% 50 from um, planning general fund and 50% from social service funds. Um, what that has, you know, so Mark and I, looking through the city's budget and the financing and accounting system, it gets really complicated because what ends up happening is just a bunch of journal entries in the accounting period um, to move money from here to here and um, it's really coming from the same source of money. And so um, 
at the end of the day, it's really hard to understand what a program costs. And so our recommendation is to fully fund them out of the social service funds for clarity and um, with the goal of um, doing what we did with the Native American Commission in 2019, asking for those to be future funded out of our general funds. And so um, that, uh, you know, this is kind of new to the commission, but one of the things the staff we've been talking about is how can we get planning functions and planning costs coming out of the general fund as opposed to this um, social service funds. So I know it looks like we're going backwards, um, but for 2019, I would like to show that that budget is a little cleaner so that the city commission can see that a little bit more evidently. If I might, Nicole, um, the 2019 budgets have already been established for the city. Are these yes. changes reflected in the city's budget? No, basically that remainder amount, so that missing, um, I'd say that missing $5,000 and $15,000, basically that, sent, that stays in the planning general fund anyway. And so if it turns out those are expenses or costs you want to use for other things, we can look at that and just follow the city purchase policies. Um, but uh, but mm -hmm. yeah, we can do it two ways. We can transfer this over to that or that over to this. Yeah. And that was my only question, uh, not my only question, but and I'm curious everybody's thoughts on this, but I don't want to leave us short with grant capabilities if we're just supplanting, supplanting what ordinarily would come out of the general fund. Right. for government activities like the Human Relations Commission or Youth Commission. So how do you, what's your sense on that? I, I'm, protect, I'm protective of our abilities as this committee goes to provide actual grants to the community. Yeah. And this depletes that a little bit. Right. So the committee, if you look on the back page where it's the middle column that totals 186, mm -hmm. that's what we discussed and approved. And then these other ones that add up to the total of 250 were these program ones that Nicole just mentioned. Is that correct? No, it wouldn't be 250, would it? No, um, that's not correct, uh, okay. Linda. That, that middle column is. Um, well, last year, uh, our total for less. this award that we did at the end, I think it was 181 or? Yeah, it was right at 180. Yep. And so, um, and then staff was going to do some updating. So as far as that final column of the 250, those other funds were those unallocated funds that we didn't discuss in the meeting, but that you'd said were program funds. Yeah. Yeah. So maybe just to add confusion, um, so last year we had 30, you know, 35,000 of the Native American Commission come out of this budget, plus the FYI, plus the human relations. So this year, uh, uh, human, uh, the Native American Commission went to its own light item. It's not even coming out of plan, planning fund. It's just mm -hmm. coming out of its own line item. And um, the uh, and then the rest, um, uh, so then, um, so that, and I wanted to maybe explain the homeless transportation assistance and the special assessment assistance. So I'll start with the special assessment assistance. So the special assessment assistance, it's really, both of these are really a gap filler for 2019. And um, the special assessment assistance uh, used to be a CDBG program. So basically, if special assessments were needed on your property and you couldn't pay them um, based on fixed income and other criteria, you qualified for CDBG uh, assistance. It turns out that program is not, uh, we did an internal audit and it's, it's not meeting federal criteria. So um, effective immediately, we're actually gonna go into a deficit um, for 2018 effective immediately, uh, we ceased using CDBG monies for that. So we want to find a gap filler for 2019 and then have that larger discussion with the, the board and commission um, and the city commissioners and elected officials, et cetera, to find out how we're going to use this program moving forward. But we don't want to stop the program because we think it's vitally important to keep people in their houses. And so this seemed like an um, interesting win to um, meet the goals of homelessness and homeless prevention. And, um, and it's a program we can administer really, uh, we have the, the capability to administer. Before, and then, you, before you move on, let's, yeah. let's stay on that yeah. topic for the moment. Do you sure. have any questions or comments on, the, on the, uh, the, the assistance for special assessments? Anybody at all? It's a great program and, and it's needed. 
in, in this last year at the city level when we've had so much feedback about specials, um, we, we, we acknowledge that there are people that are stressed um, by special assessments and taxes and that we, on fixed incomes and so on, that we need to try help them. So this, this is a good fit in my sense. Anybody have any thoughts on that? Sam? Is that 20000 going to cover the 2019 expectation? Okay, that's the full, that'll cover the full program. Okay. How does that get uh, uh, dispersed? Um, <laughs> Chrissy, would you like to do a little summary? Yeah. Uh, sure. So it's income eligible um, applicants, and um, basically the check is cut from the city directly to the county. And our hope is to have that done before um, the statements, the property tax statements, are mailed out so that the homeowners can see the correct bottom line that they owe. Is that income to the homeowners or? No. 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 Okay. No. No. Okay. We're paying the county. We're okay. making that payment directly. All right. Any other questions on, on that topic? Okay, let's not, go. Not a question, uh, Tom, I Commissioner. If you would. Uh, just as we move forward, and I think with all these, just make sure that can we have just a list of how many like folks were actually helped and where? So I mean, as we think about prioritizing, mm -hmm. like, and I'm not disagreeing that it's not important, but just making sure that we do focus on specific neighborhoods where individuals may need the assistance, and so we can again just con continue to demonstrate the value mm -hmm. of the program, so it's not a, a free for all. Or I will pay you ten bucks, and you, or, you know, but yeah. making sure we're really focused on where those dollars are going. Okay, some tracking. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, and they have to apply, and yeah, we do income verification okay. and all that. The, basically, just to further close the loop on the CDBG, what was happening is we weren't doing environmental review on the projects themselves. And so um, the environmental review to use federal money is required for all dissemination of projects. Anything else on special set, Jim? Well, not sp sp specific just to specials, but all of the yellow highlighted. Um, First of all, I, I support all of them. I have no problem with them, but they don't belong in this process at all. Uh, there was no grant application for us to review from the city on wanting to have some kind of program to offset special assessments to help people out. So I think this too is a topic that maybe not this committee, but maybe the city needs to be having about, okay, do we want to allocate $80,000 of what we call our social services funds to city usage? Because mm -hmm. um, that's exactly what we're doing here. Mm -hmm. Okay, And again, I don't have a problem with it. Um, in, in one sense, these funds start through the funnel to this committee from the city to begin with. Mm -hmm. um, but I don't even think we should have them on this sheet. I think it should be a third thing. Just like we are separating the community development from the social services, government activity would be the third one. Um, and take that off of our plate. That really should be on your city commission's plate as you're trying to figure out how are we putting our budget together for 2020. I, again, nothing to change this sheet for this year. I, I, I have a similar sentiment. You know, last year we, we, we had also the Native American Commission, and that was about 40 or so thousand. But what I didn't expect it was when we shifted that to the city budget that we'd have these a $15,000 and a $5,000 increase in these other commissions uh, to us. You know, and so I, I don't know that we resolve this today, but I, I, I'm not so sure I'm in agreement that's the role of our social service fund. And maybe, and I don't disagree at all. Uh, and so maybe a couple things of interest that uh, did not does not get shown here is um, one is uh, if we were to remove the yellow pieces what is ex what was asked to be funded by the so the, the committee remains the same the hundred eighty one thousand yeah mm -hmm. yep. so um, so which leaves a balance but wasn't that determined after they were told you have two fifty three minus these no so that's what you came up with separate from this? Yes. You didn't want to spend more no, when than we the 181? No, everybody and we looked at all of their grant requests and we got down and we said, where are we? Um, I don't know the math 
isn't yeah right. I think we were at 180 last year and the year before we were what 181 and our recommendations okay. here look like 170 with a spreadsheet we were kind of doing it by. Okay. so we were close and then we said um, we knew that some of these other things had to be addressed and then there was some follow-up questions with some of these applicants so so in fairness I took the balance mm -hmm. and spread it so right. between these activities yeah. mm -hmm. and, and I think I may be able to help because and, and thanks to the committee's work especially um, and, and I want to show such gratitude because I, I agree with Jim and, and Commissioner Strand to the extent that you know th this appears to be from my first review a $75,000 reduction in what the subcommittee had to work with I, so I really appreciate the ex appreciate the explanation but it looks like you've got $250,000 to start with you accounted for $175,000 then there's a $5,000 contingency and then the yellow items add up to $75,000 that brings you to your total of $250,000 so it, there might be some confusion because it sounds like last year was at 181 this year's at 180 but the math does work so I deeply appreciate everybody who probably had to review and triple check it even to make sure it but if you want to give us $75,000 more we yeah. could spend it right so that's that's ultimately where I'm sort of interested in because I think this is part of the conversation that that we're, we're getting to and and with regard to action I still think there is action that could be taken with regard to a recommendation to the mayor and a city commission for approval of the allocation of the 2019 social service funds in the amount of hundred and eighty thousand dollars as reflected by the subcommittee's work I'm not making that motion but I'm saying that that is an option because what it would clearly do is indicate that that is the subcommittee's recommendations upon their review they came up with this dollar amount and we can move that forward for approval and then you could as a separate motion with a roll call vote say okay so this is reflective of our concern with regard to if there is sufficient concern with regards to the other seventy five thousand dollars just as you know not that I agree with Jim not that any of these aren't worth supporting I'm fully supportive of those, them as well they're super important programs I'm familiar with at least two of them um, so you know from my point of view but it, it would at least send the message if you break that out as a sec second motion that it's a, it was enough of a concern that the remaining $80,000 or $75,000 with the $5,000 contingency should be on everybody's radar screen from the mayor to the city commission to this subcommittee move to this committee moving forward to say hey we just don't want to forget that this was an issue mm -hmm. that was raised for discussion that would we wouldn't want to see as a sort of repeating pattern that there is general fund expenditures that could be continued to be made up by this social services fund and that seems to be counter to the, the intent of this program does that all that make sense that's very sensible Jim kind of hand in hand with that I have a different kind of question on this too and you know maybe, maybe I'll look at the homeless transportation assistance line 20,000 we have no way of knowing what that number is going to be until we get <coughs> all the way through the calendar so it could come back to be 23,000. The city's going to have to figure out where's the other 3,000 come from. It could be 16,000. Let's just say it's 16,000. What happens to the other 4,000? Does it come back to this group to figure out is there someplace else we should allocate that? Or does it go back over to the city commission and the general fund to be spent again for projects that are needed? whether it's tearing down a civic uh, property or whatever. Michael? Yeah, I, it would just be unexpended revenue at that point. It would be an expenditure not realized. It would just be in the black. And, and if I may, real quick, so um, if I can explain what the homeless transportation assistance is real quick, because that's a new thing. And um, that's after, because um, I think what we're getting to is the difference between city operations right. and community development work from the outside of City Hall and um, and so homeless transportation assistance is a is a, an element of that which is um, through staff's work so if we also keep in mind that Dan was a department of one basically and um, for this work and I mean I'm not discounting his existing staff but basically he did this independently with Pat and mayor etc and um, and so um, I kind of see it as um, the social service funds applications is a really interesting process from a staff perspective <coughs> because it basically for about 60 days you have everybody uh, I'm sure Thomas has this experience you have everybody in our community making appointments sitting down explaining their history who they are what they are what they need and then and then we guide them to the application and then they come forward you know so 
Uh, I used to joke that Dan was like the secret CEO of every nonprofit in, in the Fargo Moorhead area. And, um, but anyway, so what we discovered is now we have staff, and now we have staff that we can, which is an excellent thing, and that we can have staff that can actually execute some of these programs as well. And homeless transportation assistance is one of those. So um, what has happened in the past is we gave money to the FM Homeless Coalition um, in a check of 15, 20,000, and they used it and dispersed it amongst the um, shelters. From the from this. Service fund. And so what, instead of have FM Homeless Coalition cutting those checks, we would like to work with each of the shelters directly, see what their need is, and and fund that and it sounds like we actually would like to work with Gladys Ray in particular um, and have them run the shelter program and they have no money so we would like to use this money to work with them so in discussion in the past with Cody and Jan and Pastor Sue um, the program costs about twenty thousand dollars and so that's where we use this instead of FM Homeless Coalition asking for this money we'd rather FM Homeless Coalition ask for what they really need and, and if this is really a transportation function for Gladys Ray, then we'd rather work with Gladys Ray to function that money. So I really appreciate Matt's comments here because it's exactly what we're talking about here. These are, the yellow programs are things that are separate and apart from the work of the social service funds. And in all essence, we should be presenting that to you in a di whole different light. So mm -hmm. you, almost if you want to pretend these yellow things aren't here <laughs> and just talk about the green elements. I think um, Matt's right on the money with two different approaches and yeah. you're chiming in as well as I'm hearing that um, because the questions I have I have some other questions but the questions I have are the, 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 the allocation of the deployment of public funds uh, through the city and and how it gets to the, the cause I, I'm, I'm, I'm concerned to see us pick up more for the Human Relations Commission and for the Youth Commission when I, I'd like to see the justification for why that isn't in the city budgets because where I want the city to go is pull those government entities out of the, the grant process. But that's just me. We, we succeeded last year at, at uh, shifting the Native American Commission out, and I think for the same reasons, and, and I think we're on the path of aiming there. But what I didn't expect this year was the bump up in the other commissions. Mm -hmm. You know, that's what surprises me is, you know, I'm, I'm the, the, the transportation I'm all on board for. Mm -hmm. The, the, so the, the special assessment assistment, assistance, I'm all on board for. So if we can just look at maybe today we work through the grants, mm -hmm. then we revisit the topics, because we don't have to decide them today, do we? No. On the yellow? No, not and at we, all. And uh, maybe our subcommittee can keep working on that topic in the meantime? Yeah. Excellent. Does this make sense? So, and, and in the process, uh, our, pra our practices will, will be able to uh, mirror expected uh, policies so we're all on the same page there? Mm -hmm. yes. For the so we'll we'll deal with the green today. We'll we'll follow up further on the yellow. So let me just throw out some quick questions about the green that'll be easy answers. Okay. Last year we had F five. I don't see them on the list. Did they not apply? They did not apply. And uh, and that to me seems like an oversight, but they, they didn't apply. Um, last year we had thirty five thousand for for career coaching at North Dakota. State School of Science, the Tech College, is that not is that shifted? That's a CDBG. Last year it was a CDBG. That was CBDG. That wasn't grant funds. Correct. Okay. Good. Thank you for helping me. Um, and we do expect an application for them at CDBG time. And last year, maybe it's the same answer. We had bus passes for new for CDBG. For, is that CBDG too? Good. That that answers my questions. Anybody have have any other questions on the on the green, or feedback or concerns? Um, maybe for the committee. The goals addressed, um, are those prioritized in any order, or is it just a matter of um, the, the all, last columns they're there? They're all eligible. All eligible, so, so it wasn't? There's no priority. Okay, there. perfect. Thanks. Sammy, you are a grants person. Do you have anything catching your eye in there? No, I'm just surprised there's only 41 applicants. That doesn't seem like too many for the amount of money. How many were there last year? Do we know? Um, I think probably what we're seeing the differences is the difference between CDBG and social service mm -hmm. funds. As we split this out now, yeah, mm -hmm. this year. Mm -hmm. right. Yeah, it's, and, that, and that's probably a comment to Sammy for um, one of the things I've noticed this year and 
because this is new for me too, other than being a witness in the past. And um, what I've noticed this year is, I think the entry to barrier, the barrier to entry is really hard for uh, new and up and coming nonprofits. And so I'd really like to work with the commission and the boards on that. The application itself is very tedious. You know, I've heard folks mention uh, a few times, and maybe even today, uh, the viability of these organizations and the ability to, to be uh, their sustainability capabilities and so on. Um, and, I, and I think, Jim, you had also mentioned this. Um, in your approach to this, have you, have you come up with a way to address those needs or issues of helping uh, an organization become more self-sufficient or become more economically viable? Or, or, or do you see a need still, Jim? Uh, we talked about it quite a bit. Okay. Um, and, you know, I, if I could, I'd create an orange block here. And I'd say let's put $50,000 in the orange block to actually train these organizations how to become sustainable, uh, train them how to fundraise, as opposed to expecting that they'll figure this out on their own. Um, and maybe there are others in the community that are already serving in that capacity to some degree, but not really from a centralized dissemination point like mm -hmm. the city could do. Because um, there were a number of these organizations, when we looked at it, quite frankly, the, the, what they're trying to accomplish is a need that we all felt good about. Mm -hmm. But we also said, we don't believe this organization will be around past this grant because there was no other funding and, and no capacity, no leadership development. Um, and obviously right now that's not a purpose of the social service fund, but if, we, if we're gonna have yellow ones to help out the city budget, maybe we should have orange ones and really focus in on what can we do to help the exec directors of these organizations become self-sufficient. Linda Boyd had also mentioned these, these these concerns, if I recall, over time. Maybe as your your subcommittee goes forward, um, we'll we'll address the green today. We'll we'll revisit. Have you revisit the yellow? And and my concern, maybe at the administrative level, we can see the balance of the city funding, general fund versus uh, this fund approach for the other commissions, like the Human Relations Commission and the Youth Commission. And maybe that's where your orange can come out of if, if you're able to eke some out of that. If maybe, you know, I, I think it's a really valid concern to help these entities become more, more viable. Thomas. Thank you, Commissioner. To, uh, the FMRA Foundation has done a lot of work on creating a whole learning series throughout the year on uh, nonprofit issues related to taxes, finance, donor engagement, thanking. Um, Shameless plug for myself, I got to co-teach one with a consultant on outcomes about three weeks ago and trying to teach nonprofits how to measure. I do want to make sure that, that this committee or subcommittee doesn't feel that we have to train nonprofits. It's absolutely vital and it's important and it's, I think, work that we feel really passionate about. But ultimately, I hope that the city can adhere to goals and strategies and what it wants to see. And ultimately, there's going to have to be winners and losers. And I know that sounds cold-hearted, but we can't try and pull 150 organizations along to make sure that they can you know, demonstrate outcomes or demonstrate success. What maybe the committee could look at doing is what was the result of this funding and feel success from that and then move on. Because I think the sustainability model for nonprofits largely is grant. Um, especially when you serve more people that have no ability to pay, there's no way you're going to be sustainable. Um, if you're going back to those same community members and say you should give, again, this is a commentary, not really a question, so I can can my comments if you need to. Um, but I, I think it's, it's an interesting point, too, and I, I do agree, Jim, that there's a definite need to train a lot of these nonprofits and build capacity in viability or sustainability, but I don't know that that I guess could be the work of this committee completely because I think we could go down a rabbit hole of trying to lift up a hundred different nonprofits when I would hope that the committee being stewards of taxpayer funded money should look at the, the goals of what we want to actually accomplish that have been outlined by the city. So kind of going back to what do we actually want to see happen. Good feedback. Lots for our subcommittee to work on and, and it's, a, it's, a, it's a process as we know. 
Okay. To the green. Jim. I'm going to make a motion just so maybe Absolutely. we can uh, get going. I move that we authorize or recommend to the city the expenditure of $170,000 of social service funds as identified by those organizations highlighted in green on the 2019 application Sur social services fund spreadsheet. Was 170 correct? I heard of 180, I thought. Well, right. I just subtracted the yellow from the 250 and I come up to 170. Okay. All right, just so we're at 170 is correct. Okay, good. So we have a motion from Jim to approve uh, today the green applicants and the committee recommendations for, for the grant funds. Is there a second? Second. second. Thomas seconded. Any other discussion? And I'd only offer to follow up on Jim's math. It's totally correct. I was off because it's totally right that the yellows add up to, for the individual items, $75,000, and then there's a $5,000 contingency, striking that from the 250 starting pool. Or actually, it wasn't the starting pool. It's the 170 is what the thank you again to the subcommittee they came up with. So 170 is correct, and the, and the remaining is what we'll discuss later. Okay. Further discussion on the green, the 170 recommendations. Now's the time. If you have questions or concerns or you're not happy, today's the day to say it. Or serve on the subcommittee next year, right, Mr. Or, Chair? <laughs> do they serve food if they work food in an hour? They did okay. serve food. All right, you did. Yeah. Good. Yeah, good. All right. Um, one last interjection from my perspective Thanks, relative to when the subcommittee goes forward, and this is just me. Um, we get surprised through the year of, of some things that kind of come at us. You might see if you have any room to grow the contingency fund a little bit, you know, uh, just in case, because we will have requests and we'll have surprises that'll come at us. Uh, so if you have some number juggling capability, it wouldn't bother me to see that contingency fund uh, increased a little bit, just so we, if we have it there. All right. Any further discussion on the approval of and recommendation to the city commission of the approval and the awards of the 170,000 in grants? Yeah, I have one Linda. little comment. Um, I noticed with our 170 that we added up under the food pantry. Remember, we had that second. We were going to do a challenge grant for them of five, and that isn't in the math. So our idea, one of our ideas, was to give. An organization we picked them as sort of a test case to say we'd like you to get match funds and we I mean that wasn't something that we fully brought out to, to, to discuss here but that might be that was where we were adding the development to community development we we're saying how can we help these organizations that we actually donate to leverage what we're doing to take it to their private donors and say we have a challenge grant is that different than the Giving Hearts Day rec grant rec matching that some do on um, February, whatever? I know they, a lot of our grant or grantees use this for Giving Hearts Day. Okay. And yet I'm told not everybody gets matching monies on Giving Hearts Days. No. It's not everybody like we think. It's only a few, is my sense. It's yeah. not nearly as. So we can table that. That's an aside. Okay. But All right. So back to the green. Any further discussion on the 170 green requests, recommendations from subcommittee to the full committee? Any further discussion? All right, Miranda, would you do a roll call vote, please? Hill? Yes. Enochson? Yes. Johnson? Yes. McDonald? Yes. Eidenshank? Yes. Cleavey? Yes. Pike? Yes. Redlinger? Yes. Fisher? Aye. Strand? Yes. This is really substantial work, and, and it's really uh, good to see our community leaders roll up their sleeves and participate with the city folks to, to, to do this. It's, that way, it's, it's a community-driven activity. Thank you all for that. And I look forward to hearing back from the yellow and the orange, whatever categories you come up with going <laughs> forward. But I, I think it's a real practical approach yeah, to Matt that you suggested. Okay, on with our agenda. I can find it. Nicole, have we covered that adequately, completely? Yes, excellent. Thank you. Thank, Thank you so much. Yeah. And, and Jasmine and Christy and Miranda and all of you, uh, Catlin and Kara, thank you all, Mark. You, this, this is a reflection of, of an entire department, the, the work that goes forward and will, will affect the community positively going forward. 
Okay. Any other business? One thing, if I may, just really brief. This is not, no action that I would ask be um, taken, but just maybe a, a question. Has the city commission or any other entities started looking at the 2020 census and yes. what a community response mm -hmm. would be? Go ahead, Nicole. Yeah, uh, so we're, we, we are, um, and we've got a staff committee, and then I um, can't remember what they call it, the counting committee. Uh, but we need to work with the mayor's office a little closer to identify that counting committee. And um, probably will look similar for those that participated in 2010, <coughs> it'll probably look similar to that. I would just either would love to either get an update here yes, if it's appropriate, yeah. um, but I think just as far as community, it's one of the most important things absolutely. we can do to make sure that obviously federal funds are flowing, probably not unknown to all of you, but just to make sure that everyone has the opportunity to participate. No, thank you. We'll add that to the agenda for January. You know, that's a really great topic. Um, maybe we can add that just as an update at one of our future community development meetings. Um, you know, it's going to have an impact beyond uh, just the numbers. We're, we're, I'm sensing, and I'm learning, but I'm sensing that will affect our, our transit, our Metrocog definition of how big our community is, and we'll change them. It, it has potential of affecting our entire transit approach to becoming, with the population growing enough to becoming an authority versus a transit department. Or, you know, things like this that are coming, that it's going to have a big impact. Have a big and impact it will affect HUD, too. Mm -hmm. oh, actually, if right. folks are not so, counted. It's the framework for the entire planning department. <laughs> for so that would be a really good update. <laughs> just so you know. <laughs> that would be a great update for community development when you yeah. see the moment. Right. And actually, Shara just yeah. uh, reminded me, um, look forward to an email from us. We're um, hoping in January, I need to get my calendar and figure out the date. Um, I'm starting to do joint uh, city um, planning commission and community development brown bags lunch meetings. And so we'd love to. Um, combine those two groups. Um, historically, that's how it used to be. And so um, we would love to have that cross communication, especially as we go into 2019 work plans with um, planning commission as well. And they feed them. And we feed you. There's food. Yeah. <laughs> you know, just uh, we'll wrap up in about a minute. But my sense, and, and I just keep the, uh, us aiming the same direction, because I tend to spin. Um, the things that we have as primary goals uh, the, immediately in front of us is to wrap up this grant process and the various aspects of that of that whole arena we just were in. Um, we, we will be going forward and continuing to wrap up and work with the community on the Community Land Trust. So that's something that came out of this committee, but it's out in the community's hands right now. But that will be a, a wrap up priority for us as, as the year unfolds. Uh, coming out of the planning department in the right timing will be a neighborhood uh, strategic study, strategic planning for neighborhoods. So when that comes to them, in my sense, that's going to be a priority of Community Development Committee. And, and one that we're hearing about peripherally, but I don't want us to lose, lose touch of with is, is the high rise. And Matt, um, whatever we can do from the city and the community's perspective to make that evolve into the very best solution we can for the future, uh, don't hesitate. But in my mind, that's a priority of this committee of going forward and and I'll try not throw us a bunch of curveballs of other things to do because because we, we need to focus um, but the, and Ken the neighborhood st strategic neighborhood plan will tie immensely closely into the, the issues you're concerned about and, and passionate about so so timeliness is important with these priorities too anything else for the good of the order not I uh, thank you all for for your work for your public service and I wish you all a good safe holiday and we'll see you in January 15th. Thank you.